Hey, what's going on YouTube? I've been wanting to make this video for a long time about Wavetable and specifically synthesis and how simple a concept it can be to make your own custom sounds in your music productions. You don't need to take a really long synthesis course. You don't got to get bogged down a lot of technicalities. And today I'm going to be doing it in Wavetable in Ableton, but you can use the concepts in this video for literally any VST synth or on any DAW that you have. And I really mean that, uh, but we're going to do it in Wavetable today. So I'm going to go over to instruments, Wavetable is at the bottom, drag and drop it in. And a lot of people don't even know this about Wavetable is that you can go over here to this little triangle, hit that, and now you have a much bigger interface. It's a lot easier to see everything. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that because it's a lot easier to see. And uh, the main idea here is that there's very small differences between different synthesizer sounds. So right off the bat, by default, when you open up Wavetable, you have sort of uh, electric piano, uh, Wurlitzer, Rhodes, Fender Rhodes-esque kind of thing. It's just sine waves and sounds really nice. And you can do a lot of fun things to sounds that you pull up in this sort of keyboard style right off the bat. So you can go over here to unison, turn this on, and you'll have something more ghostly sounding. This is great for trap, by the way. You get these very ghostly sounds and that's just a sine wave going through unison, right? So that's all that's really going on there. And you can make things sound a little more crunchy by going over to the filter, drag it down, go from clean onto the OSR, which has a drive setting. I'm gonna turn this up, watch out for volume, turn that down. And now I have something with a lot more hair on it. Nice, cool, crunchy, almost kind of a uh, crushed kind of sound. And it's kind of as easy as that to get cool keyboard sounds. Um, you don't even have to touch anything. If you want to kind of go to the synth side of things, we can check out our oscillator up here. And essentially, if I pull this up, things are going to get way more buzzy. And now I have more of a synthesizer kind of sound. I can push it up even more and it will get even more buzzy, especially with the filter off. So it's kind of like going from keyboard to synth is as simple as changing the oscillator and making it more like a, a saw or a square wave. Um, and that gives us the, the synth sound, right? Now, the really interesting part, and this blows a lot of people's minds when I show this to students, is going to a pad. And a pad, it's so simple. Go over here, over here to your amp envelope. Maybe let's turn the sustain down for now. I'm just gonna push this attack to around plus three seconds. And you'll notice as I hold down the keys, maybe I'll turn the release up to, to a plus three. As I hold down the keys, it takes a while to reach its apex of volume. When I let go, it kind of breathes away. Um, and that's essentially a pad. It's essentially a slow attack. And that's really <laughs> the only difference. Like if I took this and brought this down, it's a pad that sounds warmer. That's it. Right, I'm just using my MIDI keyboard there. It's underneath the camera, you can't see. So that's a pad, that's all it is. It's just a slow attack. Um, you can play around with the envelope as much as you want, but sometimes the difference in the shape is as simple as that. Um, and there's other types of synth sounds too, and it's so easy to get there. I like to go to monophonic sounds. So a bass would be a great example of a monophonic sound. A lot of monophonic synthesizers of the past were used for bass and leads because those are typically, well, you know, monophonic. A bass player on an electric bass is a lot less likely to play a chord, right? So I go over here to poly, turn this back to mono, turn off the uh, unison effect. And then basically what I have now, if I just kind of play uh, the lower notes on the keyboard, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a, a bass, but I wanna change uh, my envelope. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna bring my sustain back up. I'm gonna have sort of like this uh, squarish kind of shape. And that's essentially what a bass is. I can do some other things. I can maybe turn on the sub oscillator, turn that up. Uh, but essentially now, I have a nice kind of warm bass sound, uh, just like that. And I might go back to my low pass filter here and go back to OSR and play around with the drive just to add a little more crunch and saturation to the sound. So 
So now I have kind of a bass. Uh, it's really as simple as that. And a lot of other things you can do with bass are just playing around with tonality. So let's say I want to change this to a saw. I can do that and maybe grab another one and just grab another saw. And maybe I'll mess around and push this one up a little bit by just a little bit sharper. Make this one a little bit flatter. Go over to Unison, turn that on. Filter it down. And now you have something that's sort of like a Reese bass, you know, kind of a modulated stereo bass sound. Really huge sounding. So that, you know, now you have a Reese bass. And then a lot of times when it goes to like, how do you make a lead? A lot of bass sounds and a lot of bass presets you might be pulling up in your VST of choice are actually also uh, leads. If I go up here and pitch, it's still a little dark. I'll turn that back up. I basically have a lead. You know, a lead most of the time is defined as a monophonic sound that's really good for playing uh, leads. And that works really well. And the great thing about monophonic sounds is you can play around with the glide, turn this up to yeah, about 150 milliseconds. You can get those great slide effects, which are really cool. Kind of let things uh, just play around with it. So glide is really cool, monophonic sounds, but that's basically a lead uh, in a nutshell, right? And leads are also really great to go into arpeggiation type sounds, just really simple in Ableton. I just go over here to MIDI effects, arpeggiators right at the top, drag and drop it before wavetable. And I like to go for a faster rate, like around 16th notes, go up, down, and play something like a, a cool minor nine chord. There you go. It's like instant, instant stranger things, right? <laughs> uh, like that TV show. So that's basically it. And you can play around with this obviously a lot more. You can have a faster rate. Sounds like a video game, right? Um, you can just play around with this stuff. It's so easy to go from a lead to an ARP. The cool thing about this, if I hold down this uh, well, hold button, I can play around with the rate. And the release is also something you want to pay attention to gets a lot uh, crisper and even helicopter kind of sounding when you play around with the release. Um, and up to this point, I've really only used one envelope. So the other two envelopes have been completely dormant. I haven't even talked about LFOs. Now, of course, you can talk about all that stuff. But what I find with synthesis is people overcomplicate everything. Um, it's not necessary. All those other things on the screen are just there for an extra layer of customizability and detail and sound design depth. But you don't have to do that to learn the types of sounds. And this goes right to drums. I mean, you can make your sounds and wavetable uh, make a drum sound. It's not crazy. There's nothing uh, mysterious or, or super technical about it. Um, if I want to make a kick drum, I need to think like a bass first and foremost. Maybe I'll turn off oscillator two. I'll turn off unison. I'll go back to my oscillator one and I'll go to basic shapes and pull it down back to a sine wave, back to where I started. And my envelope here is going to look way different. It's going to look a little more like a knife. So I'm going to make it like that. And then I'm going to go over to envelope two. And now I'm going to use envelope two because what I'm going for is the sound of I mean, even though this is a synth kick drum, uh, kind of emulating when uh, a kick drum in real life, when the beater hits the skin of the head of the kick drum, right? It's essentially created through a pitch modulation effect. And what I mean by that, I'm going to show you. Envelope two, you can see, appears right here in the mod matrix. In that column, I want to line it up with the row for pitch and turn that up. Now, get rid of my arpeggiator. And now you can hear got kind of a laser kind of sound here. And really all it comes down to is just playing around with your decay and make it even shorter. Bring this down. I can bring the, uh, the semitone down on this as well. Maybe bring this down. And now I've got sort of like a kick, right? I can bring this down. Maybe turn that drive up on it. 
uh, adds a little more noisiness to this to the kick drum sound. And essentially, you have a kick, just like that. So, what's the big difference? It's a you know a monophonic sound. You've got a um, sine wave and really short amp and envelope here. That's basically it. The amp envelope and envelope two are very short. Now, if I want to go to a snare, it's just a different tonality, but the concept is very, very similar. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go down to white noise. And this is essentially going to give me something kind of similar. And I'll go back to, uh, I'm going to go back to just having uh, the normal pitch here. And I'm going to go back to my filter and let all those high frequencies back in. I'll turn off the sub. And now I'm going to make the decays basically even shorter. And sometimes I tend to turn the pitch modulation down, maybe even cut the difference or uh, split the difference, I should say. Be right around there. And I'll go back to my drive and we turn that up. So essentially you have a snare. If I play different keys on the keyboard, it sounds more lasery in the high pitches, uh, more synthy, weird snare sound. If I go lower pitches, it's a little more clangy, um, typical snare kind of sound. When you go to something like hi-hat, it's very simple. A lot of it can happen just with your filter. So I'll turn off the low pass filter, which I've been using for really this whole tutorial. And I'll go to the high pass filter. And, you know, if you've ever looked at an EQ when you're running a hi-hat, you know, in a mixing session, all the information is much in the higher frequencies, right? And this includes for shakers as well. Um, now, essentially, maybe I'll go back to my OSR envelope and kick up the drive. Essentially, I have um, something very close to a snare, and to get even more into the hi-hat territory, you just bring the decays further down. And now, it gets really tappy. And now we're kind of in hi-hat territory. What a lot of people don't realize about Wavetable, I should have put this in the beginning of the video as well, <laughs> is that, uh, um, you know, you have all these sounds here, right? If you go to this menu, you have all of these sounds. This gives you an entirely different array of stuff that you can play around with uh, for timbral, you know, options. It's amazing. What I tend to do with hi-hats is I have a white noise as my basis, then I add on oscillator two, and I just see how it changes the tonality of what I have. You just get all these different hi-hat variations. Just playing around with what combines with what. Pretty cool. And of course you can go to some of these other alternative options like vintage, you'll get different tones. There is also a whole other noise menu. I know I'm on white noise on this oscillator, but you have a whole other noise menu right here. And um, guys, that's it. That's all it comes down to. You can make this a stereo sound, turn on the unison, now I have a stereo hi-hat uh, sound. So there it is. In about 15 minutes, we've covered keyboard, different types of keyboard sounds, synth, pad, bass, lead, arpeggio, kicks, snares, and hi-hats on one synthesizer. You can take all of these concepts, and I should have said this in the beginning of the video. I don't know if I did, <laughs> but you could take all these concepts and apply it to Citrus and FL Studio, to Serum, to Omnisphere, to any VST, because all we really did was oscillators, a little bit of envelope stuff, and filter. That's it, you guys. You don't need to get fancy with synthesis right away. You can make any type of sound with a synthesizer if you kind of understand those concepts. So I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you leave comments if you have any or questions if you have any below. Hit the like button, subscribe if you found this useful. We cover a lot of music production topics on this channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Have fun making music.